please. Good morning, sir. Good, morning. Good afternoon. Take your seat, please. Thank you. Before we start, uh, a short introduction. So my name is Ardhat Singhai. I I am born and brought up in Bhopal. I my schooling was in Campion School, Bhopal. I have been passionate about playing football since my school days. I was good in physics and maths, and therefore my parents encouraged me to take up engineering. I got into IIT Delhi. I continued playing football there. I was elected as general secretary board for sports activities in IIT. Uh, from then on, I started working with Boston Consulting Group. During my uh, last year in BCG, I was working with Government of Rajasthan, Ministry of Women and Child Development, um, in the Integrated Child Development Services. During this project, my interest for public services peaked, and I decided to quit my job and started pursuing civil services. Okay, mm, your name is Singh V or Singh Hai, sir. Singh Hai. Yes. Okay. Uh, now your uh, optional subject you have taken uh, physics, so a little yes. bit of physics. Uh, what is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? Sir, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle essentially says that. Within the realm of quantum physics, it is impossible for humans to deterministically know the variables, the, the values of certain variables, because there is essential like, invariability. Like certain in, variables, like. Sorry, sir. Certain variables, like. Certain variables, like sir, position, velocity, momentum. Yes, correct. But uh, how is it? Uh, the they say Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is the bedrock of quantum mechanics. Sir, so how sir, is it the bedrock? Uh, sir, in quantum mechanics, essentially it is probabilistic in nature, which says that we cannot determine the exact location or momentum of a particle simultaneously. This probabilistic nature of quantum me mechanics finds its manifestation in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And therefore, it is very fundamental to quantum mechanics. Very nice. Now, you are uh, you have done uh, last year. You have done a project in Rajasthan on ICDS. Yes, sir. So, what is the, uh, the lessons you have learned from there, or which district was it? Sir, I was working with the directorate uh, in Jaipur. It covered all the districts. So, what are the main lessons you have learned from there? Sir, personally, or no, I mean uh, as a professional. As a professional, sir, I learned about public services. So sir, about this this project, I am talking about the that's a general. Uh, but as a project, uh, suppose you are uh, because you will be carrying a lot of experience from this project yes, if yes. you want to get yes. into yes. If, as and when you get into yes. the civil services. So what are the lessons will be carrying forward in your profession, future pro God willing, sir, future there profession. Three important lessons that I learned there. The first lesson was. Whenever we want to design a monitoring system, data validation is very important. Also, in pursuance to that, sir, while capturing data, it is essential that you have minimum number of metrics because a lot of metrics makes it very difficult to validate data and then the system becomes garbage in and garbage out. Second lesson that I learned was that it is very important for the mid-level employee to have skill development and skill upgradation. Uh, particularly, sir, for example, in terms of knowing and operating computers. Uh, from my experience, sir, they were uh, the uh, people there within the department. They did not know very basic thing, basic things with respect to computers, and therefore, data-led governance became very difficult. And the third thing that I realized was, even after capturing data, it is very important to have correct data visualization so that governance and weekly monthly meetings are possible and the bureaucrats are able to have actionable insights no see what is data capturing at the grassroots level and then the data transfer transferring to the block level or the district level and then analysis of that data yes, and then take action yes uh, based on that now, in this, uh, my view is that this, uh, this, as uh, this ICDS data crunching at the block or the district level is, has no meaning. Yes. Suppose I make a comment like that because, yes. see, what they they do is what is how many younger bodies, how many these, how many quantity of this yes. milk uh, supplied, yes. or how many children and all that, 
and you get a rough figure, your children number dwindling or going up and yes. all that. But so all these things, does it lead to a betterment of the delivery system or the, uh, the scheme as a whole? So from my experience, I'll say that we focused on just three metrics, whether the Anganwadi center was open, whether the Anganwadi worker was present and whether more than 10 children were attending that particular Anganwadi. The data that we captured was at Anganwadi level and we were able to validate data using uh, geoanalytics and image processing. So by focusing on just three metrics within one year of time, we were able to, uh, through analysis, we were able to conclude that significantly more number of Anganwadi centers started opening just because based on this data, they were also being monitored by block district and uh, director level officials. So I, while I agree to your point that capturing a lot of data dilutes the objective of data, sir. For example, from my experience, I'll tell you that there are 11 registers that one Anganwadi worker has to maintain. Within that, sir, there is a register for growth monitoring in which she notes the weight of the children. Now, what was happening in Anganwadi level was that she was not measuring the actual weight of the children. She was just noting the weight. Next month, she'll add 10 grams, another month, she'll add 20 grams. And therefore, all the data was in linear progression, which did not reflect the actual reality. So, sir, while I agree to your point that we should be careful and cautious in collecting data, I'll also like to emphasize that if the data is validated and if the monitoring is done regularly, then data-led governance can lead to significant improvements. But who will do that? Because you are sitting at uh, in the block level headquarters, nobody is going to visit that place. So, sir, uh, in my experience, the lady supervisor was a cadre which was uh, responsible primarily for monitoring the Anganwadi centers. She had around 30 centers under her and she was supposed to visit one center per week in sort. So, in, in a month, two, three centers per week. So in a month, all the 30 centers were covered. Should have been covered. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Adhuti, you are from Bhopal. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a museum there which is below ground level. You are aware? Uh, sir, I am not aware of a museum being below ground level. But I am aware of some museums in Bhopal. Some which museum? So, for example, there is a tribal museum in Bhopal. Yeah, there is also old one. Yeah. There is also Manav Sangrale, uh, Indira Gandhi Manav Sangrale Museum of Man. Uh, then there is also State Museum. So these three museums I am aware, which are. There is a new museum which came out, uh, Martyrs Museum. Museum. Sir, I have not no. read about it. That is in the basement type thing. You go down and then inside is the. I will visit that museum, sir, when I go back. Okay. And Bhopal is called the city of lakes. Yes, sir. But now most of the lakes are polluted or the water level is going down. Is it so? No, sir. In fact, the major attraction of Bhopal, which is the upper lake, it has been declared as a Ramsar site also. And there are uh, measures in place to ensure that the catchment area is not encroached. There is no pollution within the lake. And by and, far, by and far, Bhopal Lake is clean and uh, without pollution. However, sir, I would agree to your point that other lakes which are smaller in size are uh, recently they have been subject to pollution and encroachment also. Encroachment. Okay. Uh, there was a gas leak in Bhopal. Yes, sir. Years back. Yes. What was the gas involved? Sir, methyl isocyanide gas. And why it happened? Sir, it happened because of several factors. The major factor was negligence of the uh, officials with regards to safety of the equipment. The second factor was environmental factor also, sir. The climatic conditions on that day was such that this particular negligence of the officials resulted into uh, greater damage. Uh, the, actually, it was in an underground tank. Yes, sir. Sealed tank. Yes. And the pressure went up. Yes. Why pressure went up? Uh, sir, as from what I know, sir, the particular gas, methyl isocyanide, it is supposed to be uh, kept 
separately from water because if the gas reacts with water it explodes and starts emitting poisonous substances and on that day there were they were cleaning the pipes and the sa uh, fail safe mechanism was not working because of which the water got into the tank water leakage yes okay all right <clears throat> uh, now your second preference is ifs yes sir Uh, recently, after the Russia-Ukraine <coughs> war, yes, uh, Russia has become closer to China. Yes, because in the UNSC or UN in general, it gets China's support, yes. especially in UNSC. Yes, and then North Korea also has become closer to China. Russia. They are they have been supplying arms, and the head of the state visited Russia. foreign minister also visited so we have been very old friend of russia yes but now that they have formed a axis like this russia china and north korea we don't have very good relationship with china yes suppose tomorrow something happens between china and us will russia support us or we should move closer to america Uh, sir in the context of the multipolar world that has been emerging within recent years in which there have been three axes instead of the uh, two axes in the bipolar world of cold war era so namely the one axis is axis of us the second axis is axis of china russia north korea and other by jan and so the third axis is the axis which is primarily led by india and also includes global south in a scenario where india and china have increased confrontation so my reading is that india should still maintain relationship with russia because in such a situation if russia does not support india it will not support china explicitly and therefore we'll have a leverage against china and sir uh, recently india has begun uh, strengthening its tie with ties with uh, us in defense as well as other countries located in indian pacific region like japan and australia and so all these relationship have resulted in strengthened defense coordination and therefore while russia while us will support india in its defense the russia will support india by not explicitly supporting china and act as balancing agent let's hope so uh, you are fond of football yes sir okay Uh, what is uh, god's hand so god's hand was an incident in the 1984 world cup wherein maradona uh, scored a goal by hand, with his hand and the referee could not notice and therefore he allowed the goal as legal and eventually it was caught on camera and it became famous as hand of god okay uh, and what position you play sir i play in midfield midfield and what is the formation you play sir in my college i used to play our team used to play in 4 2 3 formation i was the holding midfield defensive midfield in school we used to play 4 2 3 4 2 3 four defenders two holding midfielders three attacking that midfielders that makes it 10 one striker sir goalkeeper is not included in okay formation <coughs> all right but generally these days they are playing offensive five in the front sir so this particular formation that i mention also has uh, five mem uh, five attackers at given point of time okay all right josh okay advait uh, yes, uh, you have been uh, writing uh, mains uh, repeatedly yes, this sir. is your fourth main uh, yes sir fourth mains first interview yes Okay, and uh, after you left BCG in March 2018, yes. you were full time preparing for civil yes, services. Yes, sir. But your uh, base headquarter to operate for civil service exam is Bhopal. Yes, sir. So you passed out from Delhi. Your parents are both professor. Yes, sir. What subjects? Sir, electronics and communication. Okay. Both of them. Both of them. Fantastic. Uh, you have studied industrial engineering and production engineering. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me as why? and how china has become the global capital of manufacturing yes sir so may i take a moment yeah. to think about that sir
So, sir, there are four major reasons because of which I think I China, just want two only. Two reasons. Huh. So, the first reason was their investment in infrastructure. So, sir, compared to India, India spends around five percent of their GDP on infrastructure. China spends around ten percent of their GDP on infrastructure. So, the second reason I think which I would prioritize would be their development of uh, labor skills in in their labor labor. So, sir, while India focused on a top top down approach. meaning that they uh, first initially focused on higher education levels china from 1900 started focusing on a bottom up level that is from during the 1900s they were focusing on their primary schools then secondary and eventually in 1960s and 70s they started diversifying into vocational and uh, engineering and other subjects because of which by 1990s china had infrastructure it had labor and also sir china opened its economy in 2000 to, towards the uh, to the world by joining wto and at that juncture china had infrastructure resources and also technology because of their more expenditure on research and development so what can india learn for let's say for 10 years if we have to copy chinese model what sir, will be the two important things we should do so sir uh, if we were to learn from china take a leaf from china's growth story so india is at the right position to invest in its uh, youth and labor that is skill development because india is right now transitioning in its demo- demography and it will peak its demography by 2042 that is one sir we should invest in our demography by developing skill and sir second is that we should uh, provide impetus to infrastructure and especially logistics sir okay now coming on the india china diplomatic relations uh, china is a much heavier country yes. uh, it has not been very favorably well disposed to india yes so what can india do both through diplomatic means and other international linkages to keep a control on china so that they don't uh, play havoc with us so may i take a moment yeah uh sir so, so in order to control china's influence on india and uh, there are three things that i think india should done first is sir india should promote and uh, on the global stage voice for multilateralism okay next second i think sir india should diversify its imports from china especially sir critical imports like active pharmaceutical ingredients for pharmacy and semiconductors mm-hmm. and third is sir india should uh, establish geo strategic and security alliance within the indo pacific and indian ocean and south asian region and strengthen the south asian uh, re- region by strengthening its ties with neighbors like bangladesh and sri lanka nepal and bhutan uh, which organization india has joined in the asia pacific which will help india kind of keep an eye on china so one agency that i think is becoming increasingly important is quad right okay good so you know uh, now moving on uh, on russia ukraine war which side is responsible for the war to go on for more than 2 years sir uh, the russia ukraine war started 2 years back and it started when russia invaded ukraine now the argument that russia puts forward is that its invasion is primarily as a consequence of nato's expansionism and also because of its historic rights over ukraine the reason that this war has been uh, lingering on for more than 2 years is because ukraine has been supported through well nato member countries in form of arms ammunition and fund and it has also uh, been lingered for 2 years because of russia's inability and uh, overestimation of its strength with respect to its military so on is russia justified in doing that invasion sir in my opinion russia was not justified in invading ukraine especially in okay that's fine good enough well done thank you okay advait 
सो वट इज दिस रमन इफेक्ट रमन इफेक्ट आर यू हर्ड यस सर आई हर्ड अबाउट रमन इफेक्ट सो रमन इफेक्ट ही वॉज डिस्कवर्ड इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एट एंड इट इज अ क्वांटम इफेक्ट सर अकॉर्डिंग टू विच वेन एन इंसिडेंट लाइट फॉल्स ऑन अ मटीरियल इट ट्रांजिशन इट्स क्वांटम स्टेट्स एंड इमिट्स अ फोटोन ऑफ बोथ lower intensity lower wavelength as well as higher wavelength any material or water so so raman effect is observable for any material polar non polar both but there are certain conditions because it is generally uh, it conflicts with rayleigh scattering and other effects and therefore it is very difficult to observe raman effect oh, but what is the simple definition of raman effect like sir simple definition is if i make a light incident on a material it will emit photon it will emit uh, light of both higher wavelength than incident light and lower wavelength than incident and light what would be the effect of that effect of raman effect yeah what would the uh, how it will pre- present to a layman sir so in to a layman sir we'll observe colors different than the incident yeah, light yeah you have to come out with that and the wavelength of the light changes with yes, each bit different type of material yes so okay coming to something else like you what you have worked in icds in rajasthan from which date to which date sir so 2017 to 2018 only one year yes sir one year so who was the secretary at that time sir roli singh or yes sir roli singh ma'am so uh, i had also observed the icds program during that time uh, from the human rights commission yes sir so my findings are quite different what what are the major issues in uh, uh, rajasthan that it is program is not pick, picking up can you may uh, give two or three findings major findings sir first finding that i observed was the anganwadi workers they were overburdened and underpaid and therefore so within my time also they were they had frequent strikes of anganwadi workers the second reason was geography because Uh, in rajasthan various centers are located in uh, topographically difficult regions and my findings were totally different my findings were that not the poorest of the poor were reaching the icd centers at all and even uh, 1% of the uh, most of the children uh, who were there had uh, not gained weight the uh, really uh, marasmic child were not reaching the center at all the icds was controlled by the uh, aganwadi sevika who was the wife or the daughter of the gram panchayat mukhya most of the places yeah. though uh, and real poor people were not getting the angan reaching the aganwadi sevika so leaving that so here you were reviewing in a different way at all the no. way it should have been reviewed so, so yeah you want yes, to say something sir yes sir this this is true even i observed this when i went for field visits sir the anganwadi center uh, workers and sevikas were mostly related to the village sarpanch and they had monopoly over the rations and sir more so they did not emphasize on ece and they were morely nutrition centers only okay but when i asked you said something different so let us coming to some uh, something else like uh, as you are a production engineer so what is what is cpm sir you critical path method you know no sir i do not remember uh, not as a production engineer or the industrial production but you sir, have not uh, you have not la- learned about the part and cpm techniques sir i have learned about this technique but i cannot recall right now okay okay then then one uh, my question should not be out of place that was the first reason like how if uh, you are a jn yes sir so uh, wha- uh, if and had you been a back, uh, backward also although you are not yes let us assume there is a person who is a minority and who is a uh, backward also both yes there could be many of such people among muslims and others so where he should complain like to the backward classes commission or to the minorities commission and why i, I if he has a grievance hmm. against the any somebody or the government department or a, even a person where whether his person belongs to both hmm. is a backward class is also and is a minority also where should he complain sir in my opinion he should complain to national commission of, on backward caste because it is a constitutional body 
but being its constitution how uh, it gives more power to it any any reason uh, that that a complaint given by a minority or a backward if it goes to the backward classes commission uh, it will have more power why uh, just because it's constitutional any reason sir since it's constitutional it's uh... okay my time is over i had over to hello advait can you tell me something about advait philosophy sir advait philosophy is essentially the philosophy of vedanta school of hinduism and it means non dualism which says that the atman and the brahman are not dual it was given by sir it was given initially it, it was uh, propounded and uh, popularized by shankaracharya okay do you know something about mixed reality very famous nowadays no sir the recently a product of apple apple vision pro has been launched okay sir i i do know that okay. about augmented reality okay uh, can you differentiate between mix, like uh, the vr and ar yes sir so sir virtual rea- reality is an ecosystem in which the entire ecosystem is digital or non real whereas in augmented reality ecosystem is real physical but we augment it using certain digital holographs etc this okay. is the major difference between augmented reality and virtual reality in virtual reality i immerse myself into a virtual world entirely in augmented reality i am within the real world only but i observe the real world objects through augmented technology how you can use these new technologies in your industrial engineering sir may i take a moment to think sure so one way i think that we can use vr and ar in industrial engineering is in design processes second way i think in which we can use this is in safety purposes uh, and the third is we can use it in planning the pathway of our products in the supply chains okay so optional have been physics right yes, okay so do you know something about god particle yes sir so god particle is a famous name for higgs boson particle okay anything further related to it so higgs boson particle was recently discovered in 2012 in cern laboratory and this particular discovery was very significant because it was a confirmation for standard model of physics and this particular particle higgs boson is primarily responsible for mass of different particles okay is a god particle a part of fermions no sir it's a boson okay so nowadays npas are also in news yes so who is responsible for these npas N- who is NPAs? responsible for the npas non performing assets uh, so sir the challenge of non performing assets happen when the banks the the loans uh, the the companies which have taken loans are not able to pay their interest for more than 90 days uh, and this particular non performing assets are happening because of three major reasons the first reason is that industry is suffering and it is not able to generate enough revenue because of several uh, challenges like covid russia ukraine war uh, israel hamas war inflation second reason is that these companies in itself are not productive and therefore they lack the competency in order to compete in the market because of which they are not able to uh, pay back their interest and the third reason is related to the uh, practices of banks which have given loans without doing proper due diligence and therefore the loans that they have given were too risky and crony capitalist rather than uh, good capitalist any steps you can recall which government of india has taken to curb the issue of npa so sir government of india has taken various steps since 2012 to curb the problem of npa which started with first was to uh, recognize the problem of nps and the government dictated the banks to do an internal audit and classify the loans as non performing assets the second was sort of restructuring of loans so the government of india and rbi uh, 
ordered the banks to restructure the loans and the third was reforming the banking sector through various schemes like gyan sangam the final initiative that government undertook was recapitalization of these banks in order for uh, their bank balance sheets to be healthy great thank you thanks thank you thank now you. Uh, of the three you can wait a little bit outside we will call it that yes. thank you Come in. Come in, please. <coughs> Take your seat, please. Thank you. <coughs> your feedback starts yes. with sir. Okay, Adit, uh, this is your fifth attempt and first interview. Yes. You should try and make most of it. Uh, don't wait for the last chance because next one will be the last chance. Yes. so try to make it this time so your subject is physics yes and discipline is uh, production and industrial engineering yes. so there will be questions on that mm -hmm. especially on physics and if some member is so interested they can ask on production and industrial engineering as well and uh, you work for boston consulting group yes sir icds so questions on that your second preference is indian foreign service so there are a lot of questions that can be asked our recent uh, tip with maldives what is going on why and how lakhadip can can lakhadip compete with maldives or not why the problem arose and china's role in it okay and recently elections were held in pakistan so a new dispensation has come into the picture but it is it seems it is world wide need new what army is behind them and asif ali zardari manager's husband is there so how it will affect our relationship with pakistan China, you discussed Russia, Ukraine, then Israel and Hamas, Palestine. Yeah. So try to have an overview because I I face is your second preference. Also, other neighbors, Sri Lanka, Myanmar. Uh, PM just came back from Bhutan. Maybe somebody will ask about Bhutan. <clears throat> uh there is uh, uh, your hobby is football so uh, international football india's status in football strategy so many things that can be asked uh ips is your third preference so recently we amended all the three criminal laws so go through them is available on the net there can be questions on that sedition has been redefined mob lynching has been made punishable uh, 377 has been decriminalized adultery has been decriminalized uh, police custody the limit has been increased many things so go through all the three criminal laws and there can be questions about bhopal about madhya pradesh that's all all the best thanks uh adwait uh, you have studied well you have good answers although one or two points you were able to leave out but uh, they, they are not important but i just want to share with you like why china has become the capital of the global manufacturing you drew on socio economic gains during the mao period and then after 78 when deng xiaoping changed completely uh, china started growing but the growth became much rapid when the western technology and the funds started pouring in taking advantage of the low wages and china was also smart enough to borrow uh, or kind of take those technologies so both factors of course infrastructure has played a important role which you mentioned 
and uh, now after wto joining in january 2001 china took maximum advantage of the globalization and the free trade so much so that the industries have started uh, closing down in europe and us and even the us has started putting the tariff so in two decades or so china is now fully exposed there are more tariffs more roadblocks coming for the trade and investments have come down foreign direct investments so china is a interesting case for you to also know as you have given your foreign service number 2 to us but on the bilateral relations there are many more things you are absolutely right to point out the quad which is the correct thing to do the most important is india itself to stand in on border and economy wise which is a work in progress but it is on the right track that you forgot to mention but still you know if india is strong hopefully in 10 years time india becomes second largest third largest economy the china would not uh, kind of uh, triple with uh, in india and uh, finally russia ukraine you were uh, frank and sincere and honest enough to concede russia was the one who started uh, there are many more things which follow you know there is a general uh, trend to balance both sides uh, which is not correct you know you need to see the conflict in its uh, reality Uh, what is it that russia wants in this war more than 2 years uh, in fact if you go by the statements of the president who has just got 6 years uh, russia wants the entire ukraine to begin with and then many more other east european countries so the west has to stand up you know i mean otherwise there will going to be europe will going to face huge uh, chaos and problems so uh, there are good points on the on on the on behalf of the european union nato and us to stand up not to allow russia to have its way or highway kind of approach and russia is not so powerful that it will be able to prevail uh, of course uh, open conflict in the both sides is a mini means third world war nuclear war which is what nobody wants but within that restriction you know west is trying to block with the sanctions and many things but these are important topics in neighboring countries also you should do, you should uh, uh, know important developments that happen in pakistan relations sark bimstek and uh, israel gaza war i didn't ask but uh, you need to be a little more uh, and read ed- editorials from uh, on the net is available financial times in uh, new york times wall street journal hindu uh, you will get many uh, answers to the questions as why war is happening who is at fault you in google you will get plenty you are a bright and brilliant student and you will do very well a little bit of smile and confidence will even go further okay all right advait first on your personality it's a very nice personality but uh, your hair style and beard style looks give you a unkempt look Sorry. if that is your because that is the photograph given in the def also if you want to carry on that no sir i'll shave and i'll also get my hair cut hair cut and if hair fixer or something like that which makes you officer like otherwise <coughs> i hope this style may also work for you secondly your shirt this is not a tie shirt Yes, sir. I bought it this morning only, sir. Actually, I came uh, from. So, I, my suggestion, but my I, my chairman, who has more experience than me in these matters, will advise you further on these issues whether you want to you should take my advice or not. Well, he'll be finally giving you advice. But these are my advices on that personality. Now, coming to second part is ICDS. Ah, uh, your DAF doesn't mention ICDS. I feel ah. Uh, Uh, you don't divulge the information that you worked in ICDS Sorry, because mentioned is not. Huh? I mentioned then you cannot change it. Sorry, uh, uh, then, uh, basically, ICDS opens the Pandora box. If somebody in the board who has worked long time in ICDS will catch you on many things. Nutrition is a very important part, mm. and in nutrition, India is so poor that even uh, we are poorer in child nutrition than Afghanistan. and lowest below uh, uh, we are 7th below from the lowest uh, afghanistan is better than us dis, uh, despite of uh, having a strive for last 50 years yes. because our culture is slightly different and 
loot is much more in ICDS. That is universal program, universal uh, nutrition program from 2008 and still NF, NHFS 3, 4, 5 doesn't have shown much changes in it. Yes, sir. And they have to start one more uh, additional program in 2019, which you may not be aware because you joined in, you left in 2018. So, uh, my advice, but uh, as you said, you have mentioned that there's no, nothing, you have to read more about nutrition, what is the protein and how much protein, uh, how much how much calories each type of uh, substances are giving, that all you should know. Now, coming to current affair, uh, part CPM you should have known, uh, coming with the back, background of uh, the particular engineering which you have done. You read about that, uh, we couldn't talk about the current topics. Uh, for that, Kejriwal and AAP issue you should know very well. Uh, when is your interview? So, 5th of April. 8th of April. 5th. 5th, 5th of April. April. Yeah. So, second is the bonds issue and Manipur issue and CEA. These four topics, they should be on your fingertips on the uh, Indian circumstances. And uh, second, fast fifth thing is the about the cephalogist, what they're talking about that. And every day, keep on changing. So these four or five issues, petrol prices or the diesel prices, how they are going to affect the mood of the people and these things should, should be known to you. Thanks. Uh, I'll hand it over to the next. Thank you, sir. Panelist. So, Advet, any specific reason you have not opted for various services? So, because I was not interested in working in those services. Okay. So, most, like your knowledge base is really good and... I asked about mixed reality, AR and VR. The reason was that they were introduced in 1960s and the first uh, project was, the, it was inside production engineering only. Okay. So that can attract a question because it is recently in news. Yes. So you are already aware about the Citizenship Amendment Acts and other things which are in current affairs. You, you can also focus on that. Uh, regarding football also, there can be various questions regarding World Cup, like the next World Cup is in 2026, who is hosting and India is also trying that in the next 10-15 years, we should also host various sports events, you know, Winter Olympics or football events. So, you could have questions on that too. You can work on that and all the very best. I hope uh, you will crack it. Very Thank well. you. Uh, uh, most of the points you have covered. Your uh, one thing I would just like to cover your, your tie. Of course, is little uh, yes. uh, is not properly ironed. So you on that day you will take care. I yes. suppose uh, like say here. Yes. Uh, yeah, just uh, some somebody should guide you on that. I mean you uh, independent body somebody. Uh, yes. So otherwise it's very nice. Your personality is quite nice. Sometimes, you know, there are two types of questions, one is general knowledge based and one is opinion based. Sometimes the opinion based question, you, you because your knowledge base is quite sound, after five years, you most of the, you got good knowledge. But uh, you are not nearly, uh, literally you are carrying the thing in a little uh, narrative form. So, uh, because you will get less chance to more questions, to tackle more questions there. So, why don't you? break them into specific points when there is an opinion based question you listen to them very minutely till the end then you understand what they are asking exactly which point in the particular subject and then focus on two, two or three four important points so firstly i want to submit the most important point the second important point second point like that i want to submit this this my view because of this reason like that short and crisp sentences three four points and stop because then they have get a chance to ask you supplementary question or they will change you satisfied they will uh, everything covered so they will go to the other one to get more chances and that is number one secondly you get a chance to impress them that they are saying the way you speak point point wise so they'll say this boy has uh, thought through it uh, thoroughly from all angles 360 degree examination he has done so gives a good impression when uh, and they really don't want to, they want, they have a, all ideas about this. They just want your viewpoint. Uh, so they just want to stop at that. And knowledge base, of course, as you know, if you don't try to bluff them, don't know, uh, can, can I make a guess, sir? Take permission and then if they permit, then you can try, it will not look bad. But if you don't take permission and 
try to bluff and goes totally here, helter skelter here and there, then uh, bad impression. Uh, rest of that, all general points, DAP is your Bible, every single point. And anticipate question from DAP. You put yourself in their shoes, anticipate question from specific point, you have written yourself. And like football, these are all these football, everything covered, ISL and then EPW, the English Premier League, everything, wherever the Barcelona, these all the Spanish League, everything, you must know them. Like that, uh, as far as a strategy, everything. And uh, then another thing, ICDS, like everything you must know. Background, how it started, what is the starting point of ICDS. Then anything else, as you mentioned, Boston Consulting Group, what is this, how did they, how did they start operation in India? The genesis of this, everything, everything you go a little behind uh, this thing. And so foreign service, of course, you must know the various things happening in India and with India around the world. So there is a, a CNN IBM, there is a channel. The evening, there is a call first post. There is a program, they explain everything. Uh, the good anchor will uh, see that program if you yes. like it. Uh, a little long, but uh, whatever you like, a summary they give. So you get a good idea about that. And there are various channels, of course, on opinion based uh, channels. So you can go through them. And all the best. Thank you, sir. You should be able to do it. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Sir. All the best.